Um, yeah. Okay, so Mitch, can you um, any any first of all any questions concerns about today? Like any thoughts? Should we just dive right uh, questions, in? Questions, concerns. Uh, no, nah, man, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you okay. know, like I've I got no concerns, man. <laughs> okay. So can you yeah. um can you, first of all thanks for coming on again. I, yeah, I was no problem. Really Thank excited. you for having me again. Yeah, I was really excited to actually talk to you I again. Think, I think the last time we spoke really uh helped me in a lot of ways. Actually, it it made me see things differently, and I feel like it helped uh, other people see a side of me I don't quite normally show. If that makes sense. Yeah. So can you help me yeah. understand what you what you saw differently um, after our last session? Uh, yeah, I definitely took into consideration what you said about the thinking black and white so i've been trying to work on that um and not like look at it as things as just like set in stone like i used to look at them so i'm trying to have more of an open mind with that good and That's i've definitely awesome. been taking uh like steps sometimes when i'm you know just feeling overwhelmed or whatever i'm just like all right i'm just gonna think in the moment just like chill whatever and i've been thinking about like a lot uh about different things i guess it's, it's hard to explain it's like my my like true calling for like who i want to be is kind of like surfacing if that makes sense yeah that sounds awesome can you tell us about that uh yeah honestly uh, i i definitely think like i like um i'm like really in to like health stuff right and i've been thinking maybe i could like transition into like doing that somewhat and maybe monetizing it somehow i don't know how but like sure i don't know just like doing something different and like having other hobbies that aren't just like you know waking up and you know wish streaming or whatever i've done for the last like 10 years you know just kind of living a little differently doing some new things maybe meeting some new normal people that aren't involved in twitch and like finding out maybe finding some uh, successful healthy relationships outside of this industry if that makes sense yeah, yeah. I, I th so so it sounds like you're considering things that you kind of hadn't considered as seriously before yes definitely and i've always kind of considered these things i just never really was like acting on them and now i think that i will do that because yeah yeah and and so mitch what do you think um so you felt do you feel happy um that's uh i mean that's a that's a hard question to answer uh happy in which i mean i don't feel happy like i would do when i was 18 and i gave no fucks about anything you know i don't feel yeah. that way anymore but I definitely feel as though um, I want to keep going to see where I can get in this game that we call life, right? Like if I yeah. can get myself to a place of uh, peace of mind or whatever it is yeah. that people are searching for. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think the answer is no, which I think is a good answer and is very appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm blissfully happy now. Yeah. And and so, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't really have a good recollection of a lot of what we talked about there were a couple of things that really kind of stuck in my mind help me understand yeah, um you know what do you think so you've been so twitch and the internet have sort of described you as like super super depressed and and kind of um, feeling it's it's super hard to explain i guess how the internet views me and how like reality is you know what i mean yeah so obviously let's talk about that Okay, sure. Where would you like to begin with that? So, so how do you think you're viewed by the internet? Um, I think the internet views me off of just like past experiences I've had and like past things that have happened because I've been very open with my community and the whole internet my entire career, right? Like I've shared every relationship I've had, every girlfriend, all that's been public, you know what I mean? So there's like, mm -hmm. there's been this like fine line of like weird atmosphere about my relationships right because when everything's public it's very hard to have like normal lives sure yeah. yeah so i feel like people view me almost like always for my worst moments and it's like people don't it's like strange like it feels like as a public person you know if you ever have like a bad moment that's going to be remembered 10 times more than any good moment that you have you know yeah so I truly think that uh, people have this bad taste in their mouth from when like, like I've been through some shit and I lost my mind or whatever like years ago. And mm -hmm. I think people don't really let that shit go, you know? And they just kind of yeah. hang on to that. And it, it makes me also like not be able to let it go as easy as I could because it's just reminded a lot, you know? Sure, I mean? sure. But yeah, I, I'd say the internet definitely views me as like depressed or like maybe manic, you know, definitely very 
messy, uh, un, not consistent, very uncoordinated, those kind of things. Yeah. Okay. And and yeah. tell me about who, I mean, who who do you feel you are? I feel as though I honestly have trouble pinpointing who I am because I'm always kind of flip flopping like what I'm doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm very inconsistent. I'm very like impulsive, and I just kind of like feel like, oh, I want to do this, and I go hard for it for a while, and then I stop, and then. So who I am is kind of almost based off of who I'm around and like what I'm working toward. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think that that's um, <clears throat> so that's not that's not really the real you, right? Yeah, so like no, like it's, no, it's not. And and I I think what you're noticing is that like until we understand who we are, like. It's almost like nat- you know, nature abhors a vacuum. And mm-hmm. so if you don't know who you are, you're going to fill yourself up with the things around you mm-hmm. and the people around you and the goals. Like you become the goal because like you, you don't know who you kind of are on the inside. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think with Twitch, I, I get so carried away, man, with like the goal, right? Like I, I get so carried away to the point where I just put everything about my well-being on hold and everything I do is for the sake of entertainment and I'm not even living for myself. I've done it for years, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying I'm doing that right now because I'm kind of like half and half right now, but I've had moments in my life where I'm just like, fuck it. I'm all in with this, you know? Like, this is everything I have. It's all, you know, like, it's just easy to get into the, that thought process where you're like, oh, like, I'm, you know, a mid-20s dumbass who dropped out of college. Like, how else am I going to make this kind of money unless I go all in with this or how else am I going to find the success again in my life? I probably won't. Right. So it's, it feels as like I almost feel justified in just like going all in. If that makes sense. I think you're very justified in it. So I, I'd like yeah. to dig into that for you because I think that that's not healthy, mm-hmm. but I think it makes perfect sense because I, I think, you know, you, you have to go all in to compensate for everything else. Right. So that your only chance of success is if you go all in. And then I think I think when you go all in, you also become more of Mitch Jones and less of David. Yes, that's a hundred percent true. And I have a very hard time distinguishing uh, the two of those people, right? Yes. Like, yeah. So tell me about Mitch Jones and tell me about David. How are they different? Well, I'm a very sensitive person. I mean, who like. Deep down to my core, I'm I'm very empathetic and sensitive, and people don't really know that or see that because I just Absolutely. wall that shit off. Yep. Because but but I I really have always been that way because uh, I I don't know why I'm just I've always been that way just like super yeah. sensitive and super like I can like almost like I'm like so socially in tune with things that like I, I it's so weird like mm-hmm. I, I it's just very strange I have this like social gift almost but I I'm very bad at everything else like I'm it, it's really weird. It's so yeah. it's so it's so I'm just so weird. I'm weird. I'm really weird. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think when you say you're weird, I, I think that's a function of you not really understanding who you are. It could be. It could be. I just know that I'm bad at almost everything except understanding emotions. Like I have this like way of understanding people and just like getting them without even like knowing they don't have to tell me shit. I just know, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like it's really weird how. Uh, but yeah, I don't show that. I don't show that ever. Like I don't show my sensitive side or I try not to, I have before. Right. Like there's been times in the past where I've gotten very emotional on stream and I uh, like, it's always ends poorly. You know, people are just like, you know, like it's very weird. You know, you either get like a reaction of like, Oh man. Or like, you just get a reaction of like, fuck you. And they just keep, you know, just add fuel to the fire or whatever. Okay. But yeah, showing emotion on Twitch is almost always bad from what I've noticed. What, What do you, why do, why do we wall off things? Mitch? Am I calling you Mitch or David, by the way? I mean, whatever you want to call me. I've gone by Mitch my whole life, but whatever you want to okay. call me is fine. Yeah. So um, why do we wall things off, Mitch? Um, uh, to, to, to who? To like Twitch or to everyone? Or like, well, just in general. Why do, why do we put up walls? Because it, it just, it's just easier. Like, I don't think that David would be a good streamer, you know? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like... I would be way too emotional. I would, I would always look at things like in this weird, I, I would, I'd probably just sit there and talk about keto all day. You know what I mean? Like I would literally just like be like, Oh, I'm working on this. I'm working on that. Like no one gives a shit. Like they want to see content. They want to see this like thing, this character, this person, whatever. Like they just want, that's what, that's what Twitch is. It's an entertainment platform. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'd say 99% of the streamers on this website are personified in some way, you know? 
Absolutely. So, yeah. So it's like to to just like uh, to distinguish that from reality is like annoying, and 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 it's also very frustrating when I get judged indefinitely on Reddit and everywhere else, uh, based off of like almost like a character's. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm doing it for entertainment, but it's like people assume that that's just like how I am. So like I'll meet people in real life, and they're like, "Oh." You're not actually an asshole, and I'm like, what? Like, what, what is that supposed to mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What that? What does that mean? Like, I don't understand what that means. But yeah, like so, that happens to me a lot, actually, and I'm just, conf- it's just confusing. So yeah. What's confusing about that? That people misjudge me because even on stream, I don't even think I come off as that much of a dingus. I just think I have like a very bad, uh, like reputation, I guess. Okay. Or not even bad, just like controversial, like whatever you want to say, like something that's just like a negative spin on things. Yeah. So that what happens I'm, sometimes? So uh, can I just kind of share with you what I'm hearing? Try to tie yeah, a couple sure. of things. So like I, I think you know this kind of goes back to first of all, you're you're thinking a little bit more about like fitness because it is such a big part of you or health. It's it's yeah. a part of the real you, but it's not a part of the persona that you show the rest of the world. Oh, if it was me, I would love to be a monk, dude. I would love to just like meditate, find my true peace of mind, and just like somehow just live the simplest life ever on like a farm. Like I swear, I would love that. Maybe, maybe I get bored of it, but for now, that sounds like really good. Yeah. Why do you? Why do you think that? Um, why don't? Why do you think that you can't live a simple life in the circumstances that you're in now? <laughs> because there's I, how? How would I do that? I live like in a streamer house. I live in a cesspool of like circles of different um i i mean maybe i i just don't see how i what do you think a monk does they have very peaceful lives right what makes them peaceful i don't know i think it's they they don't do like they don't partake in like stressful things that would like stress them out in their mind and body or whatever right so, you know, that's kind of interesting. I mean, I, I think in a sense, that's absolutely correct. So monks yeah. generally practice in isolation to protect themselves of the influence, from the influences of the outside world. That sounds great. And I also think that m- most of the work that monks do has nothing to do with the outside world. It's about the internal world. Yes, they're in- inside their mind and body, right? Absolutely. So yeah. I, I, th- I think that while it's hard to become a monk in the outside world. I absolutely think that you can be a monk in the outside world. So I'm going to share with you one of the, you know, the goals that one of my teachers taught me, which is to be in the world, but not of it. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? It means you are just existing in this world. This world is not your existence. Something like that, right? Absolutely. What do you think about that? I think that's a very true statement. And I think people get carried away in their own egos and ideologies all the time when in reality, they should just look at it like, you know, like exactly the way you're saying. Like, I feel like when you look at things, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really want to get too deep. into. I don't don't know. I think you understand what I'm saying, right? I do understand what you're saying. What's your reluctance to get too deep into it? I don't know. I'm just I'm not very good at articulating words that sound correct, so I just rather not say big words or get into like ide- like ideals of like inner mind and all this stuff, you know. Yeah, so what's wrong with um what's wrong with you if you're not good at something, what's wrong with doing it? Um well, I'd say I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, right? So when I do it on stream and I just get backlash for it, so I just would rather not. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, but do you think you're getting backlash now? I'm not even reading chat, but I just would rather not go into, like, deep... Like, I just know I've done this before, where, like, I'll say some, like, five-head stuff, or, like, things that I believe are true, and it's like, no one will ever take me serious, so there's almost no point in me talking about those things. Yeah, can I think for a second? Sure. So, Mitch, I think you don't let yourself be you. That could be. I don't think you let yourself be you at all. 
Because I, I think I you're think, afraid yeah. that if people see you, they're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the way, you started to need people's approval. Oh, that's 100%. When I had people's approval, it made me like this God mode streamer. Like, I remember like back in like, uh, like 2015, 16, like I had the, the most loving crazy loyal community and like everyone I, there, everyone if anything ever was bad said about me it was immediately downvoted and everyone would be like you know like I, would ha I had a crazy cool fan base and that shit like made me like fired up to like give them like the, the good content you know like and then one day that kind of all changed and it's like flipped on its head and like i got a shitload of hate and, and like, i didn't even know how to deal with that so i just like got super depressed and i had this like uh, it just like changed everything but the approval was like addicting man like i'm not gonna lie like when you're getting like go ahead go ahead, sorry go go for it it's okay. no no i'm saying when you're getting that like positive reinforcement for everything you do it makes doing your job so easy you know yeah so i i I, th I think getting all that positive reinforcement in a weird way was one of the worst things that happened to you Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I, I, I was literally the most spoiled streamer for so long. Like I could ditch for like s months and come back and still maintain like 8000 viewers. And like this was like five years ago, you know what I mean? And it was nuts. Like I could literally go on hiatuses and just come back. And there was just no one uh, back then that like was as good as like entertaining or whatever at the time. I mean, people were way more entertaining than me now. But I think back then I had a good niche on like this, like whatever I was doing, I was doing it. I was doing it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was so nice to have that positive reinforcement for so long. So I think it's nice to have positive. It's nice for anyone to have positive reinforcement. But I think that you, it wasn't just positive reinforcement for you. I think it was oxygen and water and lifeblood. <laughs> what the the reinforcement was that? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. No, I fed off so, that so hard. Yeah. And and so then the question is, why were you hungry where you needed to feed off of that? I don't know. It's almost like I built my identity around it at that point, right? Like, I, so I, I absolutely. So I think your your identity started to build around that. That's when Mitch Jones was born. Oh right? yeah, that is that is exactly when Mitch Jones was born. Yeah. And then you started to become an icon, and I think the more that you became an icon, and the more that you became the stage presence, the more you mm -hmm. lost yourself. Because oh, you just you've shared with us that you you don't want to show people parts of David because they're they're looking for Mitch Jones and if you show up as David you're going to get negative reinforcement. And somewhere along the way you became dependent upon both the positive reinforcement and the negative reinforcement and you sort of your life became tied to Twitch's like impression of you. Your worth became tied to Twitch's impression of you. Mhm. Mm and even though the positive reinforcement sounds good, I think both of these are dangerous situations because who you are becomes determined by how you view, you're viewed. That's so that's exactly how I feel, man. It's like I, I just wish you could have that moment in the sun like forever. No, that's bad. <laughs> that's so great. That those moments were so good though, man. No, like, I that's swear, not like, I was riding this high for like years. Mitch, that is not where I'm trying to lead you. Okay, so I, I this, know, I, this I has know, to be yeah. understood. Like, why? Why do I think that that's bad? Because it's not. It's, there's no realistic longevity with that, and plus, that's, it's building. It's building yourself up on a false narrative, anyways. Right? Exactly. Yeah. No, I understand all of this. I just, it was a fucking damn good time, though, man. Yeah, I'm sure. So I'm. I'm sure you'll yeah, get there again was, too. It was a good time. Yo, so, thanks for the good time, boys. That was good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And, and I and this is really important. So I want you to like really think about this, Mitch. Where I I think that, and this is true for everyone who's watching too. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that we sometimes want just the highs from life, but that's not how life works. Peace from life doesn't like. So you think when you envision just having like your moment in the sunshine forever, mm -hmm. right? That's not actually how a, a monk lives. A monk doesn't live with a moment of sunshine forever. They attain yeah, inner yeah, peace, yeah. but how do they do it? Through honestly being all right with boredom and being all right with mediocrity and all those things. Like just I, being all right with whatever it is, is, and they're okay with the Exactly. So if you yeah. crave your moment in the sun, that's yeah. the problem. It's the craving well, there's for like your... two of me though. I swear there's like the one, there's like the side of me that doesn't crave that and I can just throw it all away and I've done it before. And then there's a side of me that always comes back. So it's like 
I'm like almost internally like struggling. Yep. Of like what so, I desire. So now we have to think about where was that second Mitch born? <laughs> the second Mitch. Uh, or, or Mitch Jones, let's say. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so so when think about this. Was who born? Who needs? Who needs? Like so like I. I mean, I kind of have, I'm trying to lead you to this because I have mm -hmm. a hypothesis about this. Okay. So here's, let me just be more transparent instead of like, you know, trying to lawyer my way to it. So, okay. you know, I, I, I think that the something, generally speaking, people crave moments in the sun mm -hmm. when there's something about themselves or their life that is just like really, really hard to accept or deal with. So you need Twitch to like make you feel good because there's something within you that doesn't make you want to feel that doesn't make you feel good. And while David overall feels good, like I, I think you like to connect with him, but there's something about David that you want to run away from by becoming Mitch Jones. And if you want true yeah. peace, the, the way to get rid of the longing for permanent sunshine like you crave the highs of, of the good years of Twitch once again. The way to get mm. rid of that craving is to be satisfied with who you are. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree with that. And I've I've done work to do that, but I, I, doing that at the same time as Twitch seems almost impossible. I think that that's really hard. <laughs> right? It's like sense. super hard. Like imagine yeah. trying to like be this thing and then having to like it's like turn it off and on and always it's just like it's, exhausting it, man. yeah it's, it sounds really hard i don't know if it's actually possible but <laughs> so i think yeah, this that's is... why i've always taken long breaks from twitch and i'm just like okay i gotta find out who i am again and i find myself again and i lose myself again and i find myself again it's like a cycle so when we think about david's life what yep. is it that that bothers you the most about david's life a hundred percent not being able to connect to anyone anyone that's the most thing like i can't connect with any people i don't trust anyone in my like I, I, there's just no way i can like make meaningful relationships because i truly think that the only reason people come into my life anyway is for mitch jones not for david does that make sense yep so, so therefore it's super hard for me to make meaningful relationships like super hard right and that yep. sucks and i feel like it's been almost every girl i've dated almost every person I've interacted with, like, it's just, it's, it's a really sad, lonely existence when you know that you're just a piece of meat, you know, like you're not yeah. anything but you, else, but a piece of meat. You weren't always lonely. You're right. I had real friends and a bunch of cool people that I grew up with until those things faded. And then, uh, I, you know, I kind of had to dive into this world that is like almost like Hollywood 2.0. Yep. So yeah. I, I think, I think what you've got to manage and I'm still sort of beating around the bush. Um, you know, so so you've kind of mentioned to me before that there there's someone there there have been people in your life or one person in particular who's really like known you and accepted you. Yes, yes. There's been a few. Like I still have like one really close friend back home, but we're, we don't keep in touch that much. But he definitely understands me and like has connected to me on that level as well. But it's when, like that, and my and my. Mind. How how old you were? How old were you when Mitch Jones was born? Uh, I'd say twenty one. Okay, how old were you when your mom got sick? Like eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, it depends on what you mean. Like, I was always kind of like a laughing like like Mitch Jones isn't like a completely personified made up thing like it's like that's how mm -hmm. i can get into that place like just being myself you know but it's like mm -hmm. when you have to force yourself to that place then it's almost like what is this you know like I, this makes perfect sense so i think like, that it, the, it is a piece of my personality it's just like absolutely it's just, I, you have to david, force it out you know david was a clown yeah 100 right? i was david's always, always been a clown. i think that's a part yeah. of who you are i think that's a part of your authentic self yeah yeah for sure no it, it, and my general yeah. hypothesis, Mitch, just so I'll kind of lay it out, is I th I think that, <laughs> you know, I, I think a lot of this comes down to your mom. I think a lot of it does as well. And I there's nothing I can do about that, though, you know, that's that's already done. I guess I can maybe like... What kind of thinking work. is that? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what I can do. Yeah. So I can't, I can't change what happened, you know? You can't change what happened. 
But yeah, a lot of it does come down to that. How so? Because I just truly think like she was like the rock in my life that just kept everything okay. And then I lost that and I had to like, and I tried to like. What are you doing right make... now? I'm just randomly shifting tabs because I have Why? ADHD. I'm just being ADHD. I don't think so. You haven't been doing that very much. I, I, I don't know. Why. Yeah, I just feel like fidgeting. I don't know. why. I was Absolutely. Fidgeting. I completely agree. What's yeah. changed in the last 60 seconds? I, I, I don't know. I guess we started talking about something that's bothering me. Absolutely. Right? So what does your mind do when we talk about something that bothers you? It wanders. And you're right. It's wandering. It's like trying to avoid that. It doesn't like it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's the, what's the perfect way to avoid it? Fidgeting around. And so I think Mitch Jones is the ultimate fidget. Oh, so you think if I become Mitch, I don't have to, none of these things surface and I can just, what do you I think? I can just carry on. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, tr yes, definitely. Cause like when I'm streaming, I don't think about this shit. I'm just like in the mode. I'm in the mode, you know? Like Absolutely, I'm in, right? And I'm you in want like it, the zone. So here's the thing about giving it your all. When you become Mitch Jones, you give it your all, right? Yeah. It requires 100% of you. Yeah. And you can't give it a, your all without forgetting about things. Hmm. You can't hold on to your mom even 1%. You can't be Mitch Jones if you're thinking about her. Like, you know that. You can't yeah, yeah. be the, the this sort of... And th I have no doubt that, like, the clown within you is, like, a genuine part of who you are. And I think that that even Mitch Jones is like actually like a really authentic. There's like there's an authentic. There's a really pure piece of you in there. There's the mm -hmm. guy that like got into your mom's car without wearing any clothing. Like that's like that was you. That was the real you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really who you are, and you show that part to the internet, and that's mm -hmm. why they love you. Because yeah. you're not putting well, on an act. I think you're just giving them a slice. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. I think I got popular in the first place just because I was a dumbass that was like a good mage in WoW, you know? Like, yeah. I wasn't like anything, I wasn't, I don't know. Like I wasn't really trying and it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. And then once it happened, I started trying because like it got more competitive and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think all that stuff is is cool. I think, you know, you've had a like a roller coaster of a streaming career. Oh, hundred percent. I've had some crazy highs and some crazy lows. Like it's it's really weird. <laughs> and yeah. I'm if it's okay with you, Mitch, I'm gonna come back to your mom. Yeah, no problem. Because I I think you've got to be like I don't think you'll ever be a, whether you're a monk living in a farm <laughs> or you're here. I don't think you're gonna find peace until you like sort of like process that and deal with that. And you kind of look at, at your life and you say, "There's nothing I can do about it." But I I. In a sense, that's true. Like, you can't cure her of what she has. But mm. I think that there's a lot of work there to be done. And how how do you suggest that I heal that pain? I think we start by facing it, right? We start by not fidgeting. We start by not opening tabs and sitting with it and understanding what it is. I think I've been facing it for so long, though. Like, I, I mean, every I... once in a while, I'll just, like, face it. Like it's, it's, it just happens no matter yeah. what. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. And what happens when you face it? I get super emotional and then, it, and then I just try to get back to normal and then I carry on. Yeah. So I think the mistake you're making is in trying to get back to normal. So right, I shouldn't so try to get back to normal. No. I mean, I think that's, that's what monks do, right? So the monks don't try to get anywhere. They just let it let it all happen. Yeah, right. To accept mm. what is. I I think what you're missing is actually grief. So I I think the process of grief is like if I had to put like you know if I had to use a word to describe what you need to do, it's grieving. Because grieving is how we. You know you can't like you can't change anything in grief. Does that make sense? And it's still really, really important to do. Like, there are bad things that happen, and we can't bring people back from the dead. And I, I don't know if true. you, I don't know if you realize this, but like, I, I think in your mind, like, they're like your mom is like not really like she's gone. Yeah, she's definitely she's not 
gone per se. It's just like she's not the person that she was or it's very difficult to watch someone deteriorate, you know. It's just yeah. like it's almost the worst thing ever when you like see someone's personality like be stripped from them and their speech be stripped, their movement be stripped. It's 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 honestly the most heartbreaking thing I've ever had to see in my life. And like when I witness when I every time I fly home I truly just have a hard time functioning because of how like distraught and like upset and sad I feel. And I, yeah. I hate those feelings. I hate them. I hate them so much. They make me unfunctional. And then if I come on, like, let's say I want to stream that day, I'll come on Twitch and everyone knows and they can see the weakness in me. They, they see it, you know, and like Twitch is, they're very uh good at seeing weakness. Right. And like, Absolutely. I get, I get picked. I get, I get torn apart and quite frankly I'm I'm like terrified of like crying or like those type of like deep emotions on stream I, I get very much so shit on for you know like I've done it on stream before and like I've it's just yeah. people call me victim Jones or say I'm a pussy or whatever and it's like Mitch so I, I'm gonna do I something that if this feels insensitive or mean to you please let me know but you keep on moving back to twitch and away yes, from yes. your mom so I'm okay. gonna keep you there so like you see that oh, like yeah, you're no coming problem. to yeah. So, okay. so I, I think so part I shouldn't of, think about Twitch ever. No, no, no. You can think about this. No, no. You can think about whatever you want to. So it's going to be my job to keep us okay. on track. And I'm asking for your permission to do so. Oh, I, I give you permission to okay. do whatever you want. So that you let yeah. your mind do what it wants to. That's actually okay. So like that, that's the reason you're talking so, to me is, is, so it's is, bad that I keep going back to that. That's like not, not helping my healing. No. Uh, yes. And it's okay. Right. Okay. Because that's, that's just, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. So like, you see how your mind is fidgeting. So yes, like you yes, start yes. opening tabs and then we kind of go back because like it, in a weird way, your mind is comfortable with talking about the pain of Twitch. Hmm. That's a roller coaster that your mind is actually completely fine with, even though it's painful. You can hmm. talk about that. You can access that. What's really hard for you to sit with is your mom. And by the way, yeah, I think yeah. the reason that, you know, you kind of say, but I've dealt with it before. I faced it before. And, and, you know, I'm like, it's like I'm not healed yet. And I think absolutely that's true. And I don't think that you've not faced it properly. I think like if we really think about this, I think you've done a good job of facing it. But I, I think your situation is actually like really, really heartbreaking because it's going on. Yeah. Right. So like when I'm when my dad passed away eight years ago, he was gone like all at once. Mm -hmm. And then I could grieve him and move on with my life. Mm -hmm. And in a bizarre way compared to your situation, I'm lucky. Because what I'm hearing from you is like every time you see her, like another part of her like kind of withers away and she's still your mom and you still love her and you can see the parts that are there. But like there's you can't it's not like it's not talking about grieving once. It, it's like grieving like a like again and again and again, like every single time. And so I don't hold you like I don't blame you at all for not being able to move past it. Because this is fucking, like, it's hard, man. It's like watching someone, I mean, she had brain cancer, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I've seen this with people who have, like, cancer. Yeah. It's like, it's just had so much, man. Like, two strokes, two brain surgeries. Just like, ugh, been on, ugh. I, I, I smell my, I, 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 I'm having trouble keeping it cool. That's fine. Don't keep this it cool. Is, this is why I just hate talking about this. I hate it. These yeah. feelings are so painful, man. Yeah. It's and I, like, I'm it just feels so fucking unfair. I just don't understand. Yeah. Because yeah. it is unfair, dude. And oh. and there isn't there isn't and there isn't understanding. Yeah. And I get really sad. Like I see um I see all these like people that I live with and everyone there have like such like loving parents and like families and I, I just feel so fucking lonely, man. Like I feel so fucking lost. Like I don't even all I have is this like this is why I like put all my chips and like I all I have is this thing that I've built because I don't have anything to go back to, you know? Like I, I just my mom is not the same. She never will be. My brother is at this point in like some assisted living because I don't even know why the hell he's there, but he is, and he's 
not doing well. And then my dad is just focused on his work. And I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm super alone. I don't have the traditional like sense of love and family and any of that shit is just, it just doesn't feel like, so, I, just, I feel alone in this world. I feel very alone and I don't trust anyone and it sucks. Yeah. So Mitch, let me, let me explain something to you. Okay. So I say this with love. You yeah. feel alone in this world because you are alone in this world. I don't want to be alone, man. I don't want you to be alone either. But I, I think it starts with like understanding where you are. Right. And, okay. and, and I think that unfortunately you have been dealt one of the shittiest hands that life has to offer. And, and that's like, I, I don't know how else, like, I'm not trying to like, I, I feel like there's a part of me that thinks that I'm beating up on you, but I mean, that's just the truth. Right. Because you had one person in your life and and she's like withering away and you're watching it happen in front of you. What you're dealing with is not like depression. I mean, sure, there may be depression there, but I, I, th I think like this is what we call like complex trauma. Right. So in, in psychiatry, like, you know, I'm not supposed to diagnose things over the Internet, but like there's this like kind of merging like th there's a difference between one event. Like so simple trauma is like if you get, you know, like, let's say you get sexually assaulted or something like that like that's pretty bad but then mm -hmm. complex trauma is when you have like a loved one who like continually abuses you like over the course of years and it's a completely different animal it's not just straight up ptsd it's like deeper and what yeah. i see in you is someone who hasn't been like life hasn't like you know sucker punched you once it's just like you take a beating every time you kind of think about your life and your loved ones and stuff like that and then there's this other weird thing that's happened is like, in order to protect yourself from that, Mitch Jones rises from the ashes, right? Which allows you to access just that part of you, which is like beautiful and funny and clowny and amazing. And it's like, it's your moment in the sunshine. But that sunshine is born out of like you stuffing other shit into the shadows. Like Mitch Jones is in the spotlight. And in order for Mitch Jones to be in the spotlight, he's got to push David out of it. And then David is alone. Yeah, fuck David. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you've been doing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you don't yeah. like being David because it's hard to be David. And I get that, man. I really do. In a sense, I actually yeah. don't. I have no idea because, you know, I mean, I've lost a parent. But, you know, I still have people in my life who love me and I'm really, really grateful for that. And I, I think in your case, like the tricky thing about Mitch Jones is then no opening tabs. Stay with me. <laughs> the tricky thing about Mitch Jones is then you become Mitch Jones. And then what's frustrating to you is that when people meet you on the street, you want them to see David. Right. When you meet people yeah, in yeah, real of course. life, I want to be myself. Yeah. I don't want to have to be this like clowny thing that's like entertaining people all the time you know and so in a bizarre way it reinforces your loneliness because those are the moments where david can be seen those are the moments where like other people can like you know get to know you and you can start to form a real human connection but instead all they see is mitch jones yeah that's true and but so I, a, I honestly feel like mitch jones is the is the thing that brings me any type of it, it's brought me everything i have like you know what i mean like if i was oh, just absolutely. me absolutely if I was just, if I was just, if I just let myself be like David, the sad cunt walking around, I would just be another depressed boomer who's broken, lonely or whatever, right? Absolutely, right? And that's what makes this really hard. So understand this, Mitch, you have not gotten to this place because you're dumb. You have gotten to this place because your strategy works really well. Mitch Jones yeah. is your savior. And, <laughs> savior. and he's yeah. what's holding you back. Right, because he's yeah. what he's what prevents you exactly. from healing. Exactly, I'm living in a, a a tug of war constantly. Absolutely. How does yeah, that feel? No, I've, it feels it feels bad, man. It feels bad because I can't just like focus on one. You know, mm -hmm. I have to do both. Yeah. So yeah. so the problem here is that like it's not David and Mitch under the spotlight. It's like they take turns, and there are times where you turn off Mitch Jones, you go home. And then you become David again and you don't like David. So you start to like move away from him. So I, I think that yeah, it's, it's not that I just like David. It's more of just like having to sit in that mental for a long period of time drags me into it so deep that I can't get out. Like I, I'll just okay. start just like 
I'll start getting very like antisocial and just doing like, you know, whatever, like just th- not productive things, you know? So it's almost like it's better to just not let that person come out because it's almost always negative. Exactly. So now I want, let, now let's understand that, right? So how can you heal if you never let that person out? Which kind of makes sense because if you let that person out, he takes over, leads to like all kinds of bad shit happening on stream. You become less successful. So I think what I would like to really help you do, Mitch, is teach you how to let David out, how to let those negative feelings out without spiraling out of control. Mm-hmm. I, I would like you to be able to be yourself and feel those negative feelings. And then also to like, you know, it's kind of we're we're going to open the closet door. We're going to take out something that's disorganized. We're going to organize a little bit and then put it back in the closet. Because mm-hmm. I, I don't think that you're going to, I mean, this is not, the strategy that you have is like materialistically successful, but I don't think it's going to lead you to peace. Oh, it's not. And and you've got to, I mean, you can't, you can't live like this. You know, you, you've got to, you've got to learn how to grieve and, and, and process those feelings. And then also like the more that you do that, the less you have to be Mitch Jones. And the more that you can be like the authentic clowny David, who's like, kind of like Mitch Jones. And then my hope, my, my real hope for you is that as you become less of this like caricature of yourself, that you can start to form like really authentic connections with people. And then my real hope for you is that like at the end of all of this, you, it's not about success. It's about you not being alone anymore. That's really more than anything else in the world. I want you so to not feel alone. I have alone. a very, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think it's best for me to just find like my peace of mind to be able to make connections? And that's more important than like the success of my Twitch channel. I'm, I'm asking you because like, yeah, they, they almost don't go hand in hand. Like if I'm working on myself and doing my own thing, like that person could be a bad, boring streamer, you know, like. No. So, so, so I, I don't accept your premise because I think that the way that, so previously when David used to come on Twitch, it led to a bad stream. I yes. don't accept that that has to be true going forward. Yes, I agree. I think the maturing could be a good arc for my thing. And you know? also, I think you should be your clowny fucking self. Like, I think you should be what Twitch loves you for, because I think that's a real part of you. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, and, no, I, and I my, it, so overwhelmingly, I've worked with a lot of people, Mitch, and a lot of mm-hmm. people are afraid because they, this is how, like, this is how life works, where people come up with all these weird compensatory mechanisms. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'll just give you an example. So I was working with someone who, whose dad, the one time that their dad ever said something good about them is when they were a normal weight, they got set to fat camp. And they lost stuff and were at like the bottom end of like, like below that is like when they start to become anorexic. And mm. when they came back from fat camp, the one nice thing their, their, their dad ever said to them is you look good. Rest of the time, it was like emotional abuse and judgment. You're fucking this up and you're doing that bad and things like that. So one, one time in her life where like she ever got positive feedback from her dad. Mm. And so her desire to like, meet her dad's expectations caused her to like study so hard and work so hard and take care of her appearance where she became incredibly incredibly successful entered the world of finance made like shit tons of money married someone who is equally ambitious and rich and so her whole life is based off of like this track of success which is rooted in you know not to oversimplify things but essentially like a pattern it's not that she was trying to make her dad happy it's that in order to make her dad happy she learned a certain way of functioning which was giving it 100% which was going all in which is what you do too when you go on stream mm. and she's afraid that if she lets go of that initial wound that all of the ambition and hard work is going to go with it that's a great way of putting it yeah that's 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 spot on. That's exactly what I feel. Yeah. I feel as though if I were to actually get my shit together, quote unquote, that could ruin me. Yep. Because a lot of what the appeal of my channel has been is honestly, it's, it's a fucking tornado. You never know what you're going to get. It could be some craziness or whatever. Like it's just always something ridiculous. Right. And like, that's good content. It is, you know, and it's just like, 
if 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 it's just like normal david like you know uh, then 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 what like i don't i don't have a college degree you know what i mean like i don't know what i do yeah so i think it's a very reasonable fear and i'm telling i mean the reason i shared that story with you is because i think you know it's a reasonable fear the other interesting yeah. thing is you wouldn't fear that unless deep down you understood that these two things are connected yeah does that make sense it does yeah so what do you think happened is, is we started working as I started working with this person and she started to feel more confident in herself. What do you think happened? Uh, I'd say that her wound slowly healed and she stayed successful. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. In fact, she became more successful. Yeah, I don't doubt it because those ideals don't go away, especially when they've been they've been like there for that long. So healing her wounds can only just make her more powerful in the end. Right? Yeah, but. What what is healing your wounds going to do, Mitch? I mean, potentially the same thing. Absolutely. So that's what I've seen time and time again. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to do that. And honestly, if I could like become a different entity to where like I don't have to, you know, exert myself so hard. You know, does that make sense? Absolutely. That would be great. Yeah, I would love that. I would love to In be fact respected for not being like... Yeah, like I used to be respected for like, for example, for like being very good at World of Warcraft. And like that was nice. Like not just being like, oh, it's that guy who's controversial and whatever, you know, it's it's, it's way better to be known for something, being good at something than it is just be, be known be, to be known. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So you're talking about kind of like fame versus notoriety, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. I want to be known so, for actually being good at something, not for just being some fucking jackass clown who hits on girls and cringes around, you know? Yeah, so let, let's be, I'm going to teach you kind of how to process your emotions in a second, but let's just talk about success of Twitch streaming for a second, okay? So here's yeah, yeah, the thing sure. to understand. Her psychological wounds, when I'm talking about my patient, her psychological wounds and her psychological healing has nothing, I mean, in a sense, it has something to do with her, her success in her job, but like yeah. being good at your job is about being fucking good at your job. Yeah. For sure. So if you want to be a successful Twitch streamer, you need to do the things that will make you a tw successful Twitch streamer. Don't think for a moment in the same way that all this deep, dark hurt and stuff that hasn't really made you a successful Twitch streamer. Like you've sort of sniffed out and evolved into someone who's become a successful Twitch streamer. And in the same mm -hmm. way, if you believe that healing this is going to magically make you more successful, that's not going to happen either. Oh, of course not. It the just, work it just makes you lighter to be able to work harder, right? Absolutely. So I think your life will improve, but being a successful Twitch streamer is about doing the things that make you a successful Twitch streamer. And if that For involves sure. being... And I know that. And I know that left and right. Good. Yeah. So the, the next thing is that, you know, I think they come to you because you're kind of this clowny person and stuff like that. And I think you should continue to channel that. Mm. And also if they come to you because you're a little bit of a tornado, you should also do that because I think naturally you're a little bit of a tornado. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Right. I love a little bit of spice in my life. It's yeah. Fun. So so then I'd say continue doing that. Like, right. So you don't want to be you don't want to be like wholesome. Like you you don't want to be like wholesome because that's just not who you are. <laughs> wholesome. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True. But but you yeah. also don't want to be a fucking train wreck who disappears for months at a time and is like, you know, like, uh, I think yeah, it's I've fine been, to display. I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. And And there's something about I think there's something about. You know, you being able to smile and make jokes and also from time to time show that you're like you feel alone and stuff like that. I think that's actually why you became successful, because I think yeah. that like you, you got to understand that Twitch chat is like broken, right? Like we're all broken. <laughs> we're all fucked, man. We're all broken. And so what yeah. we love to see is someone who can smile and enjoy their life and like still be successful and kind of clown around because oh, I was if, so good at hiding it back in the day, man. I swear. No, like, no one would have known I was no, cracking, you, bro. No, you, could, you, you weren't. Watch my old bots. No, you would on, never know I was a broken I cunt. I disagree 100%, Mitch. I think all, right, all, all right. of them knew. No, and, they didn't and you know, put on, man. No, they, they knew. And you put on such a good front that they thought they could do that too. They thought they could become Mitch. But deep down, they fucking knew. Yeah, it's all a matter of time till David comes out of all of us, I guess. They knew. And the fact, the <laughs> fact that you hit it so well is, I think, what gave them so much hope. Right? Because they didn't see it. Yeah. But they knew. Deep down, Mitch, I think they knew.
I swear to God, I, I just, when I watched this, I even felt it, man. Like, the way I felt was I'm just like, all right, like, I'm I'm doing it. Like, we're out here. Like, I don't have any problems. Like, let's just positive, positive, positive. Like, I just radiated positivity for so long, So man. fucking toxic, dude. That is so toxic. Is it? Yes. To just be a positive ball of fun that's bad? Yeah, because I mean, that's you pushing David into the shadows, right? So I think it's fine to be a positive ball of fun, but I think you have to give yourself space to be negative. Yeah, no, but I've been negative now for a long time. So like, you know, like it went from like polar ships, like I'm talking like super positive, everything was good to like depressed, awful, terrible. You know, like I'm talking like so bad. <laughs> both of those are wrong, right? So this is something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so now, Mitch, yeah. this is this is exactly like. So last time we talked about black and white thinking. Why do you think I've been like pushing you with black and white thinking? Um, because it's pretty obvious. That's what I do. It's like always polar opposites. There's no Abs like middle ground. Exactly. Yeah. And the monk is the one who walks the middle ground. I need to get to the monk middle, man. I need the to monk get there. Middle. So this is how it starts, okay? Okay, I want you to sit up straight. Okay. Sitting up. Oh, okay. Sitting up yeah, straight. Yeah, do, do that for your good. Treat your back with a little bit of kindness. Oh, good. yeah. Okay, so, uh, so you're leaning back because you've got like yep. a gaming chair. Okay, this is what I want you to scoot your chair back in a, a little bit. Grab one of your pillows, and I want you to sit on one of your pillows. All right. And I want you to sit. Don't lean back into the chair. So I want you, you to sit. sit straight up. Yeah. Right. And okay. I want your, your, your knees to be lower than your hips. Are your knees lower than your hips? Uh, yes. Okay. Grab another pillow so you're even more elevated. Uh, we'll take this one. Okay. Wait, that's too, hold on. I'll just get this big one. All right, big pillow. Yeah, good. All right. Oh, go. Oh. How tall are you? Uh, five eleven. Okay. So chairs are not designed for. Okay. So now don't don't lean back. So sit forward. Sit at the edge of your chair. Okay. Okay. D d do you do you feel with the second pillow that you can sit up straighter? Yeah. Okay. Now close your eyes. All right. So no leaning back, like up, right? Yeah. So sit up. Okay. okay. Closing okay. my eyes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about your mom. I'm going to just say some things about your mom, and I want you to just notice what comes up. Okay. Uh, man, I get sad every time, but all right. Good. So tell me what you feel. What is the sadness? I feel helpless. I feel angry. I feel... Grief, pain, sorrow, misery, all those things. It's all I'm it's glad, every time I think about that. I'm glad you're able to feel all of that shit. Now tell me what it feels like in your body. Um anxiety. Okay. What does anxiety feel like? Where do you feel it in your body? Kind of like right here. Good. I feel tight. Like Good. I, yeah, it feels like tight. Okay. Eyes need to remain closed as best as you can, okay? So, yeah. and then do you feel, so what is, what does the misery feel like? Where do you feel the misery? Uh, definitely in my, like, thoughts, my, like, my negative thinking. Do you, do I you feel, do you feel like, like a, any kind of like sensation, like in your head? Yeah, definitely in my head. Yeah. Like, what does that feel yeah. like? I feel heavy. Like my head is just heavy. I can't, there's no point in like going on. It's like, okay. It's, doom effect yeah so so your body feels heavy your head feels heavy you feel tightness in your chest anything mm. in your throat or your stomach mm. uh, i always have stomach stuff but okay. i yeah i have like acid reflux or whatever that is okay so, so yeah <laughs> i want you to focus back on the sensation of heaviness in your head or tightness in your chest you okay. feel those? Are they still there? Or we like start talking about acid reflux and they go away? No, they're, they're still there. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to breathe in through your nose for three seconds. And then out for three. And now in for three and out for five. Okay. 
good, out for five. You guys can do this at home too, okay? And then in for three and out for seven. And now in for five and out for seven. And now in for five and out for nine. I want you to continue breathing kind of in that pattern where I want you to take good, slow inhalations, but especially slow exhalations. And now what I want you to do is as you breathe in, focus on the air coming into you, that cool, sweet air. It's kind of energy and life. And it's like, kind of like going into the heaviness and it, you can feel that expansion of tightness. Good. So you feel tightness. So breathe into it. What are you feeling? Talk to me. Sadness. A lot, a lot of sadness. I want to like break down and I'm trying not to. Okay. So it's okay to break down. Uh, okay. Okay. But what I want you to do is as you feel that sadness, so hold the sadness with one hand. I really just, I, just, I don't want to like do this on stream. I feel I feel like I'm just going to get ridiculed or something, you know. Okay. But I definitely feel emotional, very emotional. Okay. So I want you to hold on to that emotion, Mitch. Stay with me, okay? Okay. That's okay. This is what this is what we're here for, okay? Okay. Okay. If it gets to be too much, I can snap you out of it. But I I'd like to I'd like to be there it's, with uh, you. Okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. I just don't okay. want to get too overwhelmed to where I'm like rolling on the floor or whatever. You know? That's okay. That's okay. We're, we'll, we'll keep okay. you from getting there. I, I think you're doing a good All job right. though. This is exactly what we want. We need those feelings to come out. Okay. I'm feeling tingly like all over my body. Like, okay. Uh... Return to the breath, Mitch. Listen to my words. Okay, Return okay. to the breath in for three out for five. Out through the mouth is fine. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. Feel your chest expand. One more. Don't stop. Okay. Give me three more breaths, and then you can cry. Two more. One more. You can do it. Stay with me. Okay. I don't understand why I can't keep my cool right now. I don't understand. No, no, no. It's not about keeping your cool. I, I, I need to keep my cool. I just, I no. don't. No, nope. I don't like this. I nope. don't like this. Okay. So, Mitch, if this is hard for you, that's okay. We can stop. It sounds like it's a little bit overwhelming, so we're going to stop, okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, well, tell, yes, tell me. I did, oh, can I pee? I need to pee. Go okay. pee.
I apologize. Seriously, I, I'm so sorry. For what? I don't know. I just, I'm just, um, I just, I just apologize. I feel as though I can't control myself. It's embarrassing, you know? Sure. I, I can understand that it's embarrassing, but why do you need to control yourself? I don't know. So we apologize. Just... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, it's cool. I just, I don't want to come off as though like I'm in pain or a victim or any of that shit. I, don't, I just got to, you know, like it's bad. Like I can't do that. What keeps you from doing that? Uh, it's just not good. Trust me. I've, I've been here and I just, I feel uncomfortable with like, I get ridiculed or like it's, it just, I've, it's just not good. I have okay. weird, it's bad. So so, Mitch, a couple of things to just think about, okay? So the first is that if you want to have a conversation off of stream, I think I'm open to that. So you just let me know. So think about that, okay? Okay. You know, it's it's totally fine. I just, I feel like I'm being opened up and that's good. It's It feels good. It really feels like I'm like free bad negative energy. But at the same time, like I just, I've been very much so like shit on in the past for like doing so, you know, like I've had... I've I've been through very negative experiences in in sharing my sadness. If that Absolutely. makes sense. Yeah, I I'm with you. So I, I think that let's let's move um Yeah. You good? Huh? You got the wait, why are the dogs in here? What what are you doing, buddy? Here, here take this one. Yep. <laughs> Can you get this one? I'm sorry, hold on. You got that's a, no, I think that's actually exactly what you need. Yeah, therapy dogs. There you go. Yeah. All right, cool. I think they sensed something. Yeah, the dogs are just rolling around. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you more than you know, and this has nothing to do with you. Like, it, it's not like I feel as though this is very good. I just, I, I just don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to be perfectly fine. opened up to be like attacked. You know? Yep. Yeah. So I think yeah. if that's been your experience, let's respect. The, let's respect those boundaries. I think, Mitch, I'm I'm gonna help you pull out of this. Okay. You wanna, I don't know. You wanna, okay. You want to pull out of this? Not, whatever you whatever whatever you think is correct. I'm I'm okay. I'm just letting you know. Like I just had I just overwhelming a lot a lot of things like hitting me at once, and it's, it's yep. that's all. You know, like I, I'm so not I'd like, like. I'd like yeah. to explain to you intellectually what's going on within you right now. What do you think about that? I would, I would like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So this is going to have the added benefit of as we engage our intellectual mind, your feelings hopefully will calm down a little bit. Okay. So Mitch, this shit is right beneath the surface. This is a high pressure situation. Does that make sense? Like all we have to do is calm your mind a little bit. And like all we have to do is like, like you know, it, this is kind of like, you know, poking a hole in a dam and then there's so much water that like a little bit comes out. Like all we're trying to do is we're poking a tiny, tiny hole. And instead of just like one little trickle of water coming out, there's so much pressure back there that all of these feelings are coming out. Yeah. Right. All we have to do. So understand this. When we start to meditate, which, by the way, you're gifted at. When we start to mean? meditate, I'll t you're gifted at it. You're good at it. When we start to meditate, what happens is our mind becomes empty. OK, as our mind yeah. becomes empty, it becomes somewhat of a vacuum and whatever pressure is built up within us starts mm -hmm. to fill that vacuum of the mind. So there are some ways that I can trigger emotion in you by asking certain questions, right? So I can pointedly ask you about your mom and that can trigger emotion. But even talking about your mom, the emotion is pretty manageable. Stay with me. Listen, listen. You with me? Yeah, yeah. Stay with the intellectual. OK. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying hard. My emotions are just pouring, man. I don't, I'm trying. Okay. Do you actually, so then uh, let me ask you, do you think we should just sit with those emotions for a little bit? Or would you like me to try to kind of put a, put a bandaid? I, I was enjoying you. Yeah. I was enjoying the bandaid. Okay, good. So let's continue yeah. with the bandaid. So I, okay. I think this is just, there's just a pile of emotions that's down there and it doesn't take a whole lot of emptiness to let those emotions out. So oftentimes people who meditate for like extended period, like, you know, once you get good at meditation, people have these kinds of like emotional breakthroughs where like something deep that's buried within them, like kind of comes out and the deeper it's buried, 
the better you have to get at meditation, the more you have to empty your mind in order to let that out. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. In your case, either you're really, really good at meditating, which I do believe you're gifted in, or it's not buried very deep. Does that make sense? It does make sense, yes. Like so the I, dam, you, like the dam, you said, like, you're yeah. so, pouring, so right? buddy, like, I just don't think, like, like I'm going to just say this simply. You see how much emotion is in there. You see all of the stuff that's in there. The misery, the sadness, the anger, the aloneness, all that crap is in there. There is no way, like, what you long for is peace. There is no way you can attain peace while that is there. Yeah. The good news... So what happens if you, you cut yourself, Mitch? What happens to the wound? It heals over time. How does it know to do that? Well, I'd say white blood cells go to the area and get very present and start working their magic. And yeah. yeah. So the cool thing about the human body is that wounds heal over time. That's just how yeah. we work. It's fucking amazing. All we That's have to true, do yeah. is let them, right? So in your case, you've done such a good job at building up walls around this stuff where it's mm -hmm. like you're not letting your mental white blood cells like get to the wound and start the process of healing it. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe it or not, like so you felt an overwhelming amount of emotion and then you described as feeling good and light. Right? So it's like it's kind of weird. Like so that's actually the healing. It's like unfortunately yeah. healing doesn't look like what it looks like in WoW. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Which is just green numbers, <laughs> and then your health bar goes up. Right? Yeah, just eating some mana biscuits in your ear. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. I healing... wish it was, man. Yeah, me too, man. I feel like emotional healing is so difficult and tricky and hard to understand. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, it's yeah. so hard. And and and, but I, I I think if you feel a little bit lighter, you know, you talked about feeling heavy in your head. How does your head feel now? A little better. I just know that I very much so suppressed. Like that could have been a full blown. Like yeah. Like I felt so heavy. Like so many things wanted to express themselves, and I just don't. I I I don't want to feel those right now. So I I know that like yeah. Yeah. So this is what I hate about Twitch. So normally, what I like about doing this kind of work. So I do this kind of work with people in my office, and then what we yeah. we tend to do is they they can because it's also private. And then what I'll do is I'll hug them. So generally speaking, as a psychiatrist, it's a bad idea to touch your patients because people say you shouldn't touch your patients. Some time ago, I couldn't help myself and I just started hugging people. Like I hug my <laughs> yeah. patients because I feel mm -hmm. like that's really what, like what you need, what you really need in that moment. And this is what I hate about Twitch. I was talking about this at the beginning of the stream that Twitch feels fundamentally unsatisfying to me because what mm -hmm. you need in that moment is to be held. Yeah. And the dog sensed it. The dogs. Yeah, and the dogs. They they really did. And and yeah. what you really need in those moments is to let that out and to be held and to not be alone, which like I know that Twitch chat is with us and you're not truly alone. But like mm. physically and like oxytocin levels and stuff like that, like you just need to be not alone. Yeah. Is it weird that like Twitch to me feels like my my only family? It feels like my only thing that like I can truly just talk to and just like vent and whatever. No, like I don't weird. think it, it I I used to think it was weird until I actually started looking at it for what it was instead of judging it from like boomer perceptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, the boomer generation, we fundamentally believed that human connection cannot be attained over the internet. Like there yeah. was a time where like online dating was not the norm, it was what the rejects did. And it was mm -hmm. like shameful that like you met your your partner online like cuz you couldn't find someone in real life. So you had to like yeah. do the online dating where the weirdos happen. But now yeah, like yeah. online dating is the norm. And there are some ways I, I think I, I, you know, you say this is the really, this is what pisses me off. If I could, if I could take one thought out of your mind, it would be the one where I'm afraid to do this because people are going to attack me. I've just, because, I have a very, uh, so I, I have think a that very weird history with, uh, like I, with like showing emotion on Twitch, I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, so so I understand why you feel that way, and I think that that is an appropriate and logical feeling, and I also think that Twitch is your family, and I think that's what's fucking beautiful about it. Yeah, is that like like what I have seen is like 
you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I watch Twitch. I participate in Twitch. I enjoy myself a dank meme from meme from time to time. <laughs> dank memes, yeah. you know, just like just really dank and like the kind of stuff that you you missed out on the good times, man. I'm telling you, 2015 you and stuff. Those were the dankest memes. No, I dude, watch a Twitch then. Of course, man. You oh, you were a dank memer in the back of the day, dude. The dankest, like, so look, man. I was around. <laughs> I was around. I was around when memes were born okay oh shoot true boomer like huh? true boomer like all your base are belong to us like people don't even know what that means anymore oh, they shoot, don't understand that's... nice right yeah like yata you, you know yata no i don't know what that is see this is like you fucking what gen is that? z noobs <laughs> <laughs> like you don't guys know don't know is. like like man so like this is like back when memes were born man like Buffalax, you guys know what I'm talking about. Come on, Twitch, you guys know about Buffalax. Uh, okay, I so think we're a little bit over our head or out of our league here. Yeah, so one day we're gonna have to do Doctor K does the history of memes, and I'm gonna show you guys the sweetest, dankest, most original memes. Oh, but whoa. anyway, so but uh, I, I was around during the good old days, and I I think it's not weird, right? So Mitch, what I want you to understand is that Twitch can be your family. Hmm. And and that's why, like, you know, I, on the one hand, you're afraid of what they're going to do to you because in the past they have hurt you. But just like a normal family, sometimes they do things that hurt you and sometimes they do things that make you feel loved. Mm -hmm. That's the how love it works. is a lot easier, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's not real, though. You know, like I need to find like things that actually ground me that aren't. I don't know. So... I, I, I don't I wouldn't say that it's not real. I just don't think that it's enough. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I think that the, the, what the vibes that I feel over the internet are actually genuine, but it's just not enough. Oh yeah. No, I feel it for sure. Like I, I told you, I have like a, a weird empathetic side of myself and like mm -hmm. when I can truly feel that, like that, like love power from the internet, it like shoots me to like being a normal person for like a couple of weeks. It's weird. Okay. Hold on. It's really weird. Okay, so, um, Mitch, so practically, do you meditate? Uh, do I? I do sometimes, yes. I don't okay. practice it all the time, but, like, there have been, it depends on the phase I'm in in my life, you know, but I definitely have gone years where I meditate at least once or twice a week. So, <clears throat> I'm a little bit, um, honestly, I'm a little bit lost as to how to advise you. So generally speaking, what I so I think what you did today with that little bit of meditation was actually really good for you, and I think you need to keep doing it. I think the yeah. concern that I have is that I'm not sure that you have the enough of a guardrail around you to keep from like really that dam bursting. So, yeah, but is is the dam bursting like very bad? Will that spill over into days and weeks, or I sh I hope not. But the the short answer is I don't know in your case, right? So I think okay. there's a lot of emotion that's right underneath the surface, and mm -hmm. so my generally what I'll tell people is I'll tell them to like practice a, a certain kind of meditation or something like that. In your case, unfortunately, I just don't know if that's like really like safe or handleable right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I, I would say that if you're interested in trying again, you should think about finding another therapist because you only went once, right? Yeah, I went to a therapist once and I didn't really get very far with them either. Yeah, so I, I would really consider it, like add that to your list of, you know, blueberries and other things like smoothies and things that you do to take care of yourself. Because I think you're in a slightly different place now and you may be able to get more out of it. Just a thought. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I, I think you feel this stuff deeply in your body. Do you exercise? Uh, it, it very um, inconsistently. But do you I go mean, to? Sure. It, do you have access to a yoga class? I've never done yoga, but I do stretch from time to time. I so do you got it? Like, okay, done. You got to go to yoga. I do massages and like deep tissue stuff, just like not yoga. Never done tai yoga. chi. No, I never done Tai Chi. Okay, so you got to do yoga or Tai Chi, one of those two. Okay. I think so that's this is like where you get super hot and then you like stretch where you're hot, right? It's not about stretching at all. It's also not about heat. It is oh. about mind-body. So the goal of yoga 
is not about stretching. It's about to put yourself in a physical posture in which you're stable and also brings the attention of the mind to the present. That's the mm -hmm. goal of yoga. So it's a meditative, a meditative experience. Absolutely. More so than like a physical one is what you're saying. Absolutely. So it is a mind-body practice. So it's that one sounds that, really. That sounds like it could be really good for it, healing, like stuff like this. It is really good for healing. Am I going to sit like there this. and cry in front of all the cute yoga girls and stuff? Like I don't really want to do no, that. No, you won't do that. <laughs> okay. You may do that okay. at the end, but that's okay, exactly okay. what we want, right? And if you cry in yeah, front of the yeah, cute yeah. yoga girls, you need to learn how to let yourself be David instead of Mitch in front of the cute yoga girls. It's hard. I swear when you have an audience, it's almost like you just immediately want to like be like good because you know it's like it's like yes, unprofessional it, or whatever. If something's bad, there's a bad stigma Mitch, to it. That's what we got to fucking fixing you man like yeah. i know it's hard but like yeah so go and instead of being watched by thousands of people on the internet it's just going to be half a dozen cute girls and guys so like you prefer yeah yeah, yeah. so so just yeah. give it a shot and then the next time we talk like please do it at least once or ideally three times so that you can tell okay, me so how you yoga me works do, you want me to do yoga uh three times in the next couple weeks yeah like ideally in the next week and then okay. you let me know, you know, if, if, if part of the audience makes this harder for you, then you let me know. And then we can also talk, you know, uh, you know, not on stream, but if, mm. if, you know, but I, I think it's going to be good for you. I would I, appreciate that. I, uh, well, if you, if you, um, if we could do both like on stream and off stream, cause there are okay. things that are very deep, uh, and like would almost like come off as biased for sure on stream but i would like to talk to you about if that okay. makes sense yeah yeah so yeah. we can we can we can set up a, you know some time but I, I think in the short term here's why i think yoga is better for you so like when we do meditation it's a purely okay. mental practice so all of the emotions come out yoga yeah. is going to give you a chance to let some of that stuff out like physically without it sort of like mentally rushing in and try it a couple of times, and then when we check in next, you can just tell me how it's going, whether you like it or you don't like it, and I can try to give you some other suggestions in terms of guidance. I assume that I will like it, so... Um, I think you're going to like I, it a I, lot. I do like... I like anything that's like... like I love like things like that, like saunas and all that kind of stuff. I yeah, love that heat's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. And who knows, maybe you'll make an authentic human connection. But don't ex no expectations. It's so weird, man. Like I'm so shy and like unwilling to talk to people <laughs> off stream. But then as soon as the camera's on, I'm just like talking to everyone, right? Like it's just yeah. I'm, it's so weird. Like yeah, you should see me off stream, man. I I roll around like a depressed person. I don't talk to anyone. Like I'm yeah. so different. It's so strange. I believe you. It's literally so strange. Yeah, that's because Twitch is a wonderful. Twitch makes people feel comfortable, right? That's what's so beautiful. Like, there's there's something truly beautiful about like Twitch in this community. Like, I know that we oh, talk 100%. about toxicity and stuff like that, but I, I think there's something about you know being a shy person who has trouble talking to people, and like, but like you're one of us. Like, it's about us. <laughs> yeah, it's us, right? It's not about the normies. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, about, yeah. No, it's Twitch about is us. great. Twitch has always been that way, man. Twitch has always been this like, this like amazing community in this corner of the internet that's like such like a like a tight-knit community you know yep it's not like youtube or any other like platforms where it just seems so like spread out and like just not as like it's like not a family you know like twitch feels like it's like they're the boys dude like half these guys have been riding with me since like 2011 you know what i mean like they've been watching and like playing the same shit like they it's just it's truly amazing like what has actually happened if you look at it like that you know yeah yeah, yeah man. which is cool yeah. which I, I i really really respect those people man like any of you guys that have been like ogs oh, and like have seen the ups and downs and all that stuff like i appreciate you guys man and i could truly you mean a lot to me man and like without you guys i probably wouldn't i'd be fucked like let's just say that i wouldn't yeah. be i wouldn't have had any outlet for all my shit so, so thank Mitch. you one last thing I'll leave you with, okay? So this is karma. Yeah. So in my mind. Okay. So I think that life has dealt you a very crappy hand, but you've got a okay. couple of aces in there. You were alive hey. at the right time, right? Like this didn't happen to you like 30 years ago before there was Twitch and WoW and before you could be a good mage. Like we're alive today. <laughs> before you could be a good mage. Yeah. yeah. 
Like where yeah. being a good mage involved Dungeons and Dragons, which is amazing and I love, but also it's like, you know, so like, like, I, I think that, you know, it's my firm belief, and this may be a belief that's out of fear, that life gives us challenges and sometimes life gives us a lot of like shitty stuff, but life also gives us the capacity, like gives us the tools to do what we need to, to like mm. overcome the challenges that we face. So sure, you, you can feel alone because of your brother and your mom and your dad and stuff like that. And also you happen to be uh, alive at a time where there are like thousands of people who can be your virtual family and do genuinely care about you. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of like weird. And so it's our job to sort of, you know, not look, I mean, we can be upset about, oh, you know, it's unfortunate this happened. Absolutely. You're allowed to be upset and grief and stuff like that. But like, mm -hmm. like, it's not about black and white, right? It's not that you're fucked or that you're lucky. It's that both of those things are true at the same time. Mm -hmm. that there's david and there's mitch and mitch is like this glorious guy who's like you know doing this stuff on on twitch and then there's david who's kind of like you know when he shows up like twitch doesn't like it and stuff like that it's about putting it all together it's about like being a whole person and understanding there are parts of your life that suck and there are things about your life that you're really grateful for mm -hmm. and it's been really awesome to hear you express genuine appreciation for the person that you are in your circumstances and also to be like to see you be so at the same time, like broken because of like how messed up your life is and how alone you are, that you can be both of those things at the same time. And that's really what life is. And the goal of becoming a monk is to be able to sit with both of those things. That's where peace comes from. It's not the sunlight. It's not the shadow. It's twilight. Right? By Stephanie Meyer. <laughs> it feels like it's like that. <laughs> no. But... And, and that's what I want to help you do, right? It's it's to face the bad and accept the good, like both of them. It's not either or. It's not being perfect. It's not about being successful. It's about the highs and the lows. That's what life is. Mm -hmm. And that's the journey that like everyone wants to see because that's the journey that they can relate to. Good breath. Good sigh. Thoughts? Thank questions? You. No, I... I really think talking to you is a next level experience for me. I've never actually had any type of therapy that's done really anything for me. And it's very strange to give someone else full control over like your emotions. Like I feel like you could just like give me like a weird pressure point and just drop me and render me useless for a week. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So the reason this works really well is because, you know, disclaimer, yeah. it's not therapy. Okay. And secondly, one of my teachers once told me that I should use my power for good and not evil. Yeah. Well, you make me realize things that I kind of already knew, but it's like you just like make it so right there in my face. I have to like see it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for. And uh, I also had one more question. Uh, yeah. Before we go. Sure. Uh, so I've how what is the best way of dealing with like negativity and like people that are just negative right like I, I really struggle with this because i always have this like weird righteous way of like wanting like the truth or like you know karma or whatever you want to call it right like i get carried up in these dumb little mind games with like irrelevant situations sure. and i'm wondering how you would go about that yeah so i've got kind of a weird you know nature analogy because we're talking about meditation and stuff so yeah. What I'm what I'm envisioning is a gigantic wave okay. or a wave that's hitting you, right? That's their mm -hmm. negativity. You mm -hmm. there's kind of there's a kind of like swept upness. Does that make sense to what you're describing? Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. how do you withstand a wave? You just dive through it. You can dive through it, absolutely. That's not what I was thinking, but that does work. That's what so, I do. Yeah. So I, I think it, in my case, like, I just have my feet on the ground. Just let it hit you? Yeah, absolutely, right? So uh, dive through it, let it pass through you, let it, let it get past you. Like, the mm -hmm. important thing is to be stable within yourself. So I True. think one thing is that if you engage with them, it doesn't work well, right? That's like yeah, trying I to push the wave that. away. Yeah. yeah, I have this weird thing where I just get... So so like I want to like engage and I want to like I want to like show them that they're wrong, you know? It's yes. like it's so bad, it's so, so toxic. So that's that's ego, right? So you want yeah. to convince them that they're wrong. What you need to do is dive through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to move past them, 
Not mm-hmm. like don't try to stop the wave. Don't try to fight the wave because that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. The other way to think about it is like, you know, how do you get like if I have a bucket of water. Or like, let's say I have like a bathtub, like how do I get the water to be still and calm down? If it's like spl- like splish splash. Wait, time, Abs- right? Absolutely. Right. So the more that you try to like, if I try to force all the waves down, if I like see a wave, I'm like, no, you stay still. This water needs to stay still. This water needs to stay. And that's what you do. You engage with them. Mm -hmm. And then it's like trying to force water to be still. uh, Your analogies are always spot on. I don't understand. Yeah. So so what you let, let them do is let it wash over you. So like understand that if you want to show them that something, if you want to show them, ah, that's coming from you. It's not actually coming from them. They're hitting a chord with you that you don't want to be true. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, some people have criticized me, and I think the best way to handle criticism is to accept it. People are like, uh, oh, yeah, like, I'm cool, with, I'm cool with criticism. I get more so annoyed with, like, certain people that have these, like, uh, super, like, I, I could get into it. It's also a lot, but I have this weird okay. thing that, like, attracts me to, like, negativity, and, like, it's like, it's like a continuing theme in my life so i can't understand yeah so i mean i'd say as best as you can dive through it right so let it wash over you like those people are negative so take Mm -hmm. stock in kind of who you are and like understand that you can't convince someone so like mitch you know so you were earlier saying how what i do is special and helpful right yeah am i trying to convince you of anything no i don't think so i think you're just trying to learning yeah but how are you learning without me convincing you of anything because you're unlocking the knowledge that's already there okay so i think that's kind of the approach that you've got to take for them right whether they want to see what is there is up to them you can help them along but if they're in a place where they don't want to see it you've got to like let that move past you let them wash over you Mm. Understand okay. that, that trolls are going to be trolls. Like, that's what, like, you know, you can't, like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't change a troll's mind. Like, they have to want to learn. And over mm-hmm. time, like, the people that you can in- engage with, I think it's about ego and stuff like that. I think this is actually worth, a, like, kind of a full conversation. So if, if we... Yeah, know, no, I would love to dive into this with yeah. you because this is another So, so I think, I think dealing with negativity from other people and sort of this idea that you want to show them and teach them, like, how it is and, like, oh, uh, yeah, like... Yeah, that... I have this weird, like, self-righteous, like, this thing in me where I'm just like, I have to prove them wrong, you know? Like, yeah. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. And, like, yeah. I, and I just... And it, I just get so fucking carried away with it. I ended up being losing myself in those kind of situations as well, you know? Yeah, it's it's, it's a really common problem, especially like, I don't know if you've used this thing called the internet, but it's full of people yeah. who are self-righteous and right and want to show other people how they're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, I, I check out the internet because there are people who are full of that thing there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there there's like, there are these, the, so the, the internet has all these different websites, but they're basically all the same. So, like, there's this website called YouTube that has videos, and people argue with each other about who's right. And then there's this website <laughs> called Reddit, where, yeah. where they post something. So they post a link, and then, like, right beneath it, they argue about who's right. And and they are just basically lots of these things called websites, and they're all about arguing. You even have, like, reviews of, like, restaurants where they argue with each other about whether the food is good or the food is bad. Um, And so it's, it's – I mean, there's a whole, you know – billions of people out there who are just like you and trying to teach everyone that they're wrong and we're (laughs) self-righteous so yeah we could talk about it next time but i i think in short you know in short as best as you can try to implement that imagery of just like dive through it yeah like the monk wouldn't care right like the monk would just like let it happen not get all developed in like my own ego of like trying to like prove someone wrong or whatever it doesn't matter in the end of the day right like so I'll leave you with one last thought, okay? So yeah. when you can when you should convince someone is when you are righteous, but you are not talking about being righteous. You are talking about being self-righteous. So that's ego. Okay, so right? what is righteous? That's when you're completely unbiasedly looking at something, right? That's when not it's not about ego. you. It's about them or about it's it's about service. It's about yeah. righteousness to do what is right. 
Yes. But I think what you are talking about, use the right word, because I think you're, you're self-righteous. That's about ego. Yes. So, so yes. should you try to convince other people of things? Absolutely. I mean, that, I spend a lot of my time doing that, but I do so when, when I actually am, when my cause is just, and it's not about me. It's about them. Okay. Right? So if you're well, trying to... Like, oh, yeah, just like, okay. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense for sure. So, like, what if you're, like, so certain... Like you can teach people, like you can teach someone, like or you like know you're right, right? Like you're like so sure of it. That's still self righteous, right? No, not necessarily. So okay. I, th I, th I think the issue is about like what's important to you. Are you serving a cause? Are you trying to prove them wrong and prove you right? A little bit of both. Yeah. So I think that needs to be separated because I do yeah. think that, like you know, sometimes I'll, I mean. Sometimes I'll take a hard line with people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I tend to be nice on stream and usually I'm a nice guy. But sometimes if my blood gets up and I think that there's injustice being done, I will use my power to destroy others. That's kind of how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that that's and... okay. Okay. I, I, well, no, but, right. you know, I. I think it's hard, so you have to have your ego in check. And in your case, I don't think yours is very healthy right now. So oh, yeah. work Mine's on that first. Place. Yeah, for sure. All yeah. right. Well, thank you, Dr. K. I okay. appreciate it, man. You're very welcome, Mitch. Strong work today, and man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You are yeah, definitely getting somewhere with whatever the hell is going on. Good. But You're I appreciate getting somewhere, it. too. Take care, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Have a good one, man. You, too. Okay. So, um, that was fun. I really enjoy talking to Mitch. Um, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, no, so this is the thing, right? So, like, if you actually think about it, like, seeing into people's emotions, we just gotta, I gotta clear the air here, so, right? So, like, seeing into people's emotions and understanding who they are is also, like, what's used by, like, super super toxic narcissistic people like when you get someone who can understand things and is like narcissistic and predatory they like destroy people so you know but sometimes i think if like there's injustice being done in the world like you should like you know you should stand up and fight and and do what you want like do do what's right um and help other people um okay so Guys, this is fun. What we're going to do, um, I just want to thank everyone for coming on again and uh, watching Mitch. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I hope some of that stuff w was resonating with y'all. Um, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that Mitch struggles with is actually true for a lot of people, right? So, like, we wall off our emotions. So, a couple takeaways. When we have hurt, we tend to wall it off and create, like, a version of ourselves. We create, like, this character. And we try to be that character because being that character is better than, like, being, like, the hurt version. But the goal is to actually take those walls down and, like, let that hurt out and process it so you can be free of it. Because the, the thing about walling off your negative emotions is it's like you're encumbered. Like, you know, like, you guys know, like, in an RPG when, I don't know if this happens, like, this doesn't happen in WoW because you're, like, capped by space. But, you know, some, like, RPGs will have encumbrance, so you can be, like, weighed down and it gives you a movement penalty. And that's what walled off emotions are like. It's like you're feeling, like, weighed down and sure you can still play the game, but it's, like, kind of hard. Yeah, you you're, can't fast travel, like, you're just gimped in some way, right? So the goal is to actually be, like, a complete person. And a, being a complete person is about letting all that negativity out and kind of dealing with it and accepting it. And then you'll kind of feel better about yourself. You'll be more at peace. Like that's where peace comes from and understand that peace is different from fun. So what Mitch has done is he's walled all that off. And then like, in order to compensate for the negative emotions, he rides highs, right? Like he's like super, super fun and clowny and all that kind of stuff. So he like has this inflated positivity to kind of balance out that like walled off negativity when instead what you want is to like actually have both of those kind of things be there at the same time. It's like sweet and savory and spicy 